In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. It was almost 50 years ago, Christmas Eve, 1968, the crew of Apollo 8, the first manned mission to the moon, they were not set to land. That would not happen until Apollo 11 with Neil Armstrong. But on Apollo 8, it's the first time we had set men around the moon. We were practicing for the moon landing that would happen a few years later. And as that spacecraft rounded the moon and came back towards the earth in its orbit of the moon, for the first time mankind saw something it had never seen before. Those astronauts looked out the window and they saw far off in the distance about the same size we might see the moon in the sky, they saw Earth. At that point, a very distant home for them. And on that Christmas Eve in 1968, I was about three years old, I wouldn't remember this, but I'm told that everyone tuned in to hear what the astronauts would say. And over the thousands of miles of space with a crackly, staticky reception, the world heard the words, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The astronauts would later explain that there was no other words that could capture the moment that they alone were experiencing. Were they to try to put into words what it meant to look upon earth as a distant home? But between where they were and the earth, the expanse of space, millions of stars shining brilliantly as only they can shine outside of our own atmosphere. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In this service, we heard eight Old Testament readings, beginning with this reading. Why? Why on Christmas Eve do we hear the words, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth? Because that's the beginning of the story that only finds its next step, it only finds its fulfillment in the story of Christmas. Those eight Old Testament readings that we heard were all prophecies about why the Christ was going to come. If you want to understand who Christ is and why he came, go back and read those eight readings. They start out very general, just like those astronauts looking out at the vastness of space, seeing Earth off in the distance. But one by one, those readings bring us closer to who Christ is and what he comes to do. And during the eighth reading, we hear a very strange story of the prophet Daniel who is told to write very difficult words. Some say the longest word in the Bible. Maher Shalal Hashbaz. The scripture doesn't even translate it. But the translation is something akin to destruction is coming quickly. Destruction is coming quickly. It doesn't sound like a very Christmassy message. I thought we came to hear a message of hope and light. But my brothers and sisters, all of these readings, all of the eight Old Testament readings, up to and including that one, talk about the fact that destruction is coming quickly. But what will be destroyed? Everything bad. Everything against God, everything that is evil, everything that is wrong, that is what is destroyed quickly when Christ is born. After these eight Old Testament readings, we heard an epistle, and then we hear the familiar reading of the gospel from St. Luke about the birth of Christ. We began with a very general, broad look at the universe. God created the heavens and the earth. And we end with a very specific place at a very specific time with a very specific person. 
The Gospel tells us that on a very particular night, in a particular place, Christ was born. His coming was the fulfillment of that prophecy that destruction comes quickly. He heralds the destruction of everything that is wrong with this world. And the dawning of everything that God is bringing to make everything right. The Christ comes to heal and conquer every enemy. To heal every pain. Every sickness. And to conquer even ultimately the final enemy. Which is death. This is a truly beautiful night because on this night we celebrate the birth of the Savior. Sometimes we see Him as a very general God. The God who did create the heavens and the earth. The God who comes to save the heavens and the earth. And yet, that is not the fullness of the Gospel story. The fullness of the Gospel story is that God does come to save everyone and everything. To redeem all of creation. From the very specific spot of the manger in Bethlehem out to the farthest reaches of the galaxy, Jesus Christ comes to redeem and transform and to save everyone. But that general sense of salvation is not complete. It's not complete until we consider that that general salvation is a collection of the specific, a collection of the personal. Yes, Jesus Christ comes to save the whole world and the whole universe. But that means He comes as part of that to save you and to save me. We cannot pretend that although Christmas has come and there is, we hope, joy in our hearts, we can't pretend that that covers every challenge we face. Some of us are facing the difficulty of getting older. The body doesn't work the way it used to. I spent today visiting some of our more senior members of our community, struggling with the simplest things about getting up and walking across the room, some of them. For some of us, this year has brought sickness. Perhaps expected, perhaps not. Some of us have been spared and some of us continue to struggle. And we all deal with the ultimate enemy that is death. We lose our loved ones and we see on our screens the death of many across this world. And if Christ comes to save everyone and everything, it means He comes to save us from all of that. Every sickness and illness whether now or in the kingdom, He comes to heal us. Every difficult relationship we find ourselves in, even now, even at this moment, every relationship that we assume we've exhausted every ounce of patience, we can't do it anymore, we think to ourselves. And Christ comes to save us even from that. Every failure, every regret we have, every sadness, every fear, Christ comes to save us in that. He isn't the God that's content to be the God to save the world from afar. He creates the heavens and the earth and He creates it one atom at a time and science will continue to tell us even smaller particles than that. And among all the nations that he comes to save are clans, families, and persons. You and I stand on this beautiful and in this silent and this holy night. And we stand in the presence of victory. When the Old Testament proclaims Maher Shalal Hashbaz. The meaning is the destruction is coming. And that means to every enemy we might have. 
There is no longer an enemy that God does not stand ready to conquer. This is the ultimate good news. And that is why this feast brings us joy. To every fear and every insecurity, we hear tonight the good news proclaimed that Christ is born. Salvation has come and the destruction of all those that are against our God comes quickly. And so let me read for you again to close my words with the words we heard in that Old Testament reading. This is addressed to all those that would stand against God. And if we stand with God, then there are those that stand against us. And this is God's answer to them, to every enemy we face. Be broken, you peoples, and be dismayed. Give ear, all you far countries. Gird yourselves, make ready, but be dismayed. Take counsel together, but it will come to nothing. Speak a word against our God, and it will not stand. For God is with us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.